we are coming into the beginning of the 11th over. It is 1 for 16. It's very tough out there for the Diamond Creek batters. This is a wonderful bowling performance. So this Diamond Creek opening batter is only on a score of 8, which is really indicative of just how much he has struggled against this Mernda bowling. And despite all his efforts, he just cannot break away. He's uh, doing everything he can, but it's just not working. And so we're... Uh, He's got to think of something that uh, can allow him to turn the tables and put pressure back onto the fielding team. But what? And so now one ball to go in the over, comes into bowl, and whoa, a little bit of less bounce in that ball, and so maiden, end of the over. Okay, so we're coming into the beginning of the 12th over, the score is 1 for 16. And uh, bowling at the river end, this left arm fast bowler is beginning his second over. And looks like the wicket keeper is coming up to the stumps for him as well. Uh, fine leg is straighter, slip is straighter, gully is straighter, point is going a little bit deeper. Comes into bowl. Whoa. Now that one was a bit short of a length. Uh, no pace on it. But uh, couldn't get into position to play a pull shot or anything of the sort. And instead just had to push at it. And he seemed to be a little bit upset that he didn't try for the pull shot. That shortest ball. Well. There we go. Once again, uh, when you have your fine leg, when you have your fine leg uh, in, it means it cuts off the ones. So that should have been a single, a, a leg by, but uh, he's in so much that he could cut that off. So a dot ball. And so. It, yeah, if something was to break past the fine leg, that would have just, you would go for four or two. So it's a risk versus reward situation.
And they get free there. Well run by those two. And that's the end of the over. So, we're coming into the 13th over. The score is 1 for 19. It looks like this bowler is going to continue. Maybe he'll bowl out all his 8 overs. Still two slips in play and a gully. And left alone. So, if he go, if he's going to bowl out his eight overs, you would think that Diamond Cricket just thinking, let's just bat this guy out, and we'll uh, go for the next guy. Oh, bit of a change in the field. So he comes into bowl. And blocked. So the change of the field is that they've taken out the cover and they brought in a square leg. So now there are three fielders uh, in front of the wicket on the leg side and there's only two on the off side. So a huge gap at cover between the point and the mid off. So if he wants to go for the drive, he is more than invited to do so. As he comes into bowl. and went for the pull shot, but that one just seemed to be badly timed. He rolled the wrist on it far too early and it just plopped into the ground and so the ball lost its momentum. So it was easily picked up by the fielder there at a very, very square mid-wicket. As he comes into bowl, And that's four. Well, finally the bowler miss messed up. Bowled something drivable. And the batsman straight away jumped on it and was able to hit it for a lovely, lovely boundary that the, the cameraman could really just ease into. And the wind is starting to pick up now, which is a bit annoying for our operations here at Channel 8. Because uh, we've got a lot of loose paper lying around, so we don't want it to be to blow away. As he comes into bowl. And left. So the fast bowler uh, messing up that last ball and uh, really getting up upset with himself that he was able to give away that boundary. And so he went straight back to his work. Did not overcompensate in the opposite direction. Did not make the same mistake twice. Just went back to his good old work. As he comes into bowl again. And that's the end of the over. So we're coming into the 14th over now. The score is 1 for 23. Uh, the run rate is still significantly less than two runs per over. Uh, at least it was better than what, what it ha what, than what it was about ten minutes ago, where it was barely one run and over, uh, but still not yet two runs and over. As he comes into bowl, and ooh, dot ball. This left arm fast bowler is continuing to bowl from the river end. Uh, handsome and unusual, almost James Faulkner style left arm uh, mixing. Ooh. It's not too fast, but it's a it's very clever style of bowling. And um, he's clearly trying to, you know prevent the batsman from getting any sort of rhythm and momentum through the stroke play. Well, oh. 
Well, 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 what a wicket we've seen there. That was a stumping. And now all stumpings are brought to you by Sovereignly Matrix Stump Removal. If you have a stump on your property that you need removed, go to the Sovereignly Matrix Stump Removal. So, the second wicket has fallen now. Now this seems like a classic stumping off a left arm quick. A uh, bold at, uh, at leg stump or about, the batsman tried to play a glancing, glancing drivish sort of shot, but it just kept trailing down the leg side, and so he missed it. Uh, the wicketkeeper collected it, and the batsman was so overbalanced that he could not get back into his crease. So, wonderful keeping there. That is just expert stumping. Right. It, uh, it's, it's the most difficult of all the stumpings to uh, get a left arm fast bowler down the leg side because there's just so much to worry about and you are blinded by the batsman so you just don't know and it was just wonderfully, wonderfully stumped. And left alone, a bit of extra bounce there. And that is the end of the over. So, we are about to begin the 15th over. The score, Diamond Creek are 2 for 23. That was a wicket maiden that we just saw. So, the run rate is continuing to uh, remain underneath two runs per over. And this bowler is coming into his final over. Comes into bowl and blocked. Now, uh, mid on and mid off are a little bit deeper than what they were about t 10 minutes ago. It seems that this aggressive driving from this batsman has scared them away, and so now it is possible to get a single through a push into the, the straight area through the V. And left alone. This bowler is coming into his eighth over and he has uh, figures of one for seven. So it would be an amazing bowling performance if, if he's able to wrap this up now. Whoa! Wasn't sure about what to do with that ball. It wasn't the... It's one of those awkward ones where it bounces a little bit extra, but not too much. If it bounces extra a lot, you just know that you can't play it, so you duck out of the way. But that one just bounced a little bit, so you had that second guess of do I play it or do I not. And in, in the end, he got his gloves out of the way in time. Well driven. And they're going to pinch the single. And they get it.
Pulsar. Left alone, and that's the end of the over. So, we're coming into the 16th over. The score is 2 for 24. Comes into bowl. And they'll come back for two. Well glanced. Well glanced. Comes into ball. Got ball. Comes into ball. Try to get the catch, but unable to reel it in, and in the end he gets two there. Uh, that was not a well-played shot. Um, he uh, didn't really get. He didn't get to the pitch of the ball. He, tr he skewed it and scooped it because he got underneath it, and he was unable to push it through the gap in the covers that he was aiming for. Oh, a full toss. And they'll steal a single. Very unusual over what we've seen. Mix mixture of the superb and the, the banal and the, the revolting. So, uh, but in the end, it's five runs for Diamond Creek, so despite some very unpleasant and risky stroke play, uh, they've picked up some runs off this over, and so slowly but surely, they are pushing this run rate up to two runs and over. And uh, that would be the beginning of what they would want to score from their 40 overs. Whoa! What was that? What is the umpire going to call it? Off runs. Oh, off the off the bat. Well, end of the over. And so we've had a force change because uh, the previous bowler finished his allotment of eight overs, reaching one for eight off. One for eight off the eight overs. And so we've got a new bowl up from the childcare centre round. Comes into bowl. Left alone. Comes in the ball, and it breaks through the cover region, and they'll come back for two. Well run. Uh, this guy really loves his drives, and he was uh, really frustrated by the opening bowlers because they just were not bowling it full enough. It was just all short of a length, and he really... Uh, could not get underway, but uh, when there's a loose one, either a full ball or full toss, he just gobbles it up immediately. And there's another shot, but this one pushed away for a dot ball. Yeah, 
Comes in the ball. Whoa! Wild hoosh! That's the other thing about this batter. He um, has a limit to his patience. Uh, after a certain number of uh, unsuccessful shots, he will try to manufacture something. And normally it will be untoward, to say the least. And left alone. End of the over. So, we're coming into the 18th over. The score is 2 for 33. With just uh, three overs to go before the halfway point of the innings, and that's the drinks break. Whoa, bit of unusual bounce. Dot ball. Uh, this batter has not faced a lot of the strike. He's only faced the five balls so far in his innings. Whoa! Comes into bowl. Comes into bowl. Another dot ball. This guy is bowling very clever. It's uh, it's nothing that would, would uh, blast out an opponent or outsmart them, but it is very just nibbly and uh, wily. Very very good bowling here. As he comes into bowl for the final ball of the over. And that is four. And that four, like all other fours, are brought to you by Destruction Derby Financing. If you need quality financing, go to Destruction Derby Financing. Into the over. So, the drinks break approaches. This is the 19th over. The score is 2 for 37. Uh, so we've got this new bowler coming on again for his second over. He got none for two in his first over. As he bowls this one and left alone. The left arm bowler that we saw in the previous over has bowled five overs and has one for 15. So has been uh, quite expensive in comparison to the rest of the Murndop bowling unit. And left alone. And yeah, all things considered, I think the decision by the Murnda captain to bowl out his best bowler for eight straight overs was the right thing to do when he's really revving to go, when he's got the adrenaline going, when he's bowling very well. Just keep him going, keep him going for as long as possible. But uh, everything is obviously a risk versus reward system, and so you feel like if your bowler is really going strongly and has some great momentum behind them, but then they aren't able to bowl again in the innings, and so you have to manufacture the last overs without them. One run there. Comes in the bowl and left alone. Yeah. 
So just the one ball left in this over. With just the one run conceded from it, another very tight over by Mernda. They are ha having a great game so far. End of the over. So this is this is the last over before the drinks break. The 20th over, the score is 2 for 38. The run rate has finally, after much struggle and strain from the Diamond Creekians, the, the run rate is finally up to two runs and over. And now they just have to survive this one more over before they can regroup and think about what to do. Oh. So there's no more slips that get left, there's just the uh, gully. Comes into bowl. So, on the off side there is a mid off, a cover, a point and a gully. And then on the leg side there is a mid on, mid wicket, square leg and fine leg. Aggressive run there. It uh, takes a lot of courage to block it in, block it towards a fielder and go for the run, but that's what they decided. Oh, there's the, um, there's the fielder that's been missing. It's back there. Any deep extra cover and left alone. That's a very unusual fielding place, way out on the boundary of extra cover when the batsmen have not have only hit one ball down there and left alone. And that is the end of the over, and it's time for a drinks break. You're watching Channel 8. This is round two of B grade Diamond Creek versus Mernda at the Mungra Coval. I'm Chucker Wilson and this is Channel 8 24 Hour Sports Network. Catch you soon.